morning's title is Breaking Down the Barrier of Child Marriage with the SARDA Act of 1929. Before 1929, in British colonial India, child marriage, also known as Borda, took place at the earliest age of an infant. This was a common traditional practice among many religions. Young brides were taken advantage of, made child widows by the deaths of their grown male husbands, and experienced deaths and experienced early deaths due to childbirth. Many generations of Indian girls were married off between before the age of 18. As mothers were married as children, they learned to listen, their, listen to their husbands and obey them always. India was a male-dominated country. Many mothers did not want their daughters to be married off, as they were, but many fathers married their daughters off for the money given to them as bride price. Fathers were paid to give away their daughters. So many mothers had to obey their husbands and prepare their daughters for an early marriage. Mom, I don't want to go. I want to stay here. I know, we have already had this conversation already. But your father set the marriage and then paid the bride price. I'm not going to go. I don't want to live with him. You will have to, I'm afraid. But I'll try to bring you home for visits whenever I can. But for now, we must listen to your father. He shall get going, darling. We're late. In 1927, tides turned the toll with child marriage. An Indian judge by the name of Rao Sahib Sarda wrote the Child Marriage Act, or the Sarda Act, a stepping stone that broke the barrier of child marriage. Sarda successfully promoted and passed his bill in the Legislative Court of India, but not without the help of young Indian women committees that were determined to stop Bordha. It's done. Finally, this document, the Child Marriage Restraint Act, will help end the evils of border and help all youth, even girls, to get an education and live a life without fear of early widowhood and death. I will take this to the Court of India to pass the act. One of the young Indian women committee groups that helped Sarda and his campaign was called the All Indian Women's Committee, or the AIWC. The AIWC was headed by an Irish woman named Margaret Cousins. Cousins moved to India from London in 1915 with her husband James, as he worked for the newspaper New India. When Cousins lived in London, she was a suffragist and campaigned tirelessly for women's rights. After her move to India, Cousins began a women's league now known as the AIWC, where she shared her passion for women's rights. Cousins was concerned about the continual child marriage in India at that time. In 1921, over 10 million girls were married off between the ages 10 and 15. To Cousins, this was completely unacceptable. When Cousins addressed the issue to the AIWC members, she said that banning child marriage would take self-determination. This is an excerpt of her speech. Religion, education, patriotism, and love are the four liberators of women. More and more, the world is beginning to realize the right and necessity of liberating women from every country, but along different lines according to different civilizations. Child marriage is unknown to the British. But a man by the name Rao Sahib Sarda has written an act to ban Horda for girls under 14 and boys under 16 to prevent early deaths and widowhood. We can fight and help Mr. Sarda in his rightful campaign. We will fight for the end of Horda. Yes, yes. The AIWC really did make their case over for the hurt. They rallied against political opponents and screamed insults at them like, if you oppose on this bill, bill, the world will laugh at you. The AIWC used this to make the opposition feel ashamed and wonder how they would be viewed by the world. Besides this, the AIWC took to the places where child marriage occurred most often, rural Indian homes. To convince rural families that the practice they had adopted to was inhumane, the AIWC created pamphlets and flyers and distributed them to the people. 
while trying to convince families of their traditional, though backward, thinking, the AIWC hosted meetings, gathered more supporters by hosting meetings for their own group and for SAMA's support. Hello, ma'am. We are the AIWC and we are working to end war done. There is nothing more important than giving freedom and a chance for education to young minds. If you would like to read about this, we create pamphlets that express your views, and you are welcome to take one. Hello, ma'am. The AIWC and Advocate Group for Women's Rights are trying to gather support us for our fight against Purda. Would you like to read the pamphlet and possibly join? Through the AIWC, many Indians, male and female, joined the cause to stop Borda. As support for Sarva grew, the AIWC decided to take it a step further. Margaret Cousins, leader of the AIWC, convinced Mahatma Gandhi, a leader with growing popularity, to speak out against child marriage and its evils. This is an excerpt of his speech. to repeat the advice that if there are students who want to be married, they will be performing an act of charity to look at those in India who seek out child widows when they have outgrown their childhood, and they will be doing a service to the country if they make up their minds to end child widowhood by refusing child marriage. I do not hold that anything ancient is good because it is ancient. I do not surrender in God-given and reasoned faculty in the face of ancient tradition. Any tradition, however ancient and inconsistent with morality, is fit to be banished from the land. The institution of child widowhood and child marriage may be considered to be an ancient belief, but even so, an ancient horrible belief and superstitious practice. I would sweep them out of existence if I had the power. Where therefore I talk of respecting the same God, you now know what I mean, and it is because I see the same God in the Bhagavad Gita and I see in the Bible and the Quran. Another young women committee group was called the Women's Indian Association, or the WIA. The WIA owned a newspaper called Stri Dharma, where they expressed their views from Borda to women's rights. They too supported Sarda's bill and tried to gather supporters. Margaret Cousins, the leader of the AIWC, was also the editor for Stri Dharma. Through Dharma, the AIWC through Dharma, the WIA collected many more supporters. Soon, the WIA and the AIWC had gathered thousands of supporters, voicing against Bala, a newspaper that threw insults at Sada's bill. Furthermore, Muslim Orthodox women believed Borda was sacred, as their religious beliefs followed the prophet of Muhammad, who married a nine-year-old girl named Aisha. The Muslims gathered in severe protests, hoping to stop the bill from passing, but were unsuccessful. The women's group's efforts paid off. As in 19, as, Sar as Sardis Bill became an official act on the 20th of September, 1929, preventing all children from the shackles of marrying young. This bill by Rao Sahib Sarda is now the Sarda Act of 1929. <laughs> The Sarda Act built the foundation for other future child marriage acts that ended in a ban for that ended in a ban for marriage under for marriage for children under 18 years of age. This landmark act broke the barrier for them, allowing children, especially girls, to be educated. The courageous work and determined stance that many young Indian women committees took head on enabled the passage of the Sarda Act, helping revise India's old traditional ways and bringing in the start of a new way of living. One that provided hope for the future young minds to grow and succeed. Thank you, and this concludes our performance. performance.